So today's cardinal lesson, we're talking about the opposite of what we talk about frequently, where we're talking about required minimum distributions. We're talking about delaying distributions till 73. And then we're talking about just taking the minimum. That's in complying with the law, planning your IRA that way. And so we're going to go to the complete opposite today. For those of you that have a significant balance in either your 401k or your IRA, and that balance relative to your income and assets and all that, you have a significant balance that you don't really need to spend right now. And we're going to propose that you might want to think about paying taxes on some of that balance year by year by year. And we're going to attempt to influence you to make such a move based upon our opinion of where we think income taxes are headed in the future. Okay. So some of the numbers that are up on the board is that right now we have this national debt clock that tells us that we have almost $33 trillion in national debt. That's the amount it is. And it's changing by the minute and it's increasing. And when we start talking trillions, I can lose people and just understand that a trillion is a thousand billion. And when you look at here, you've got just short of $5 trillion is the amount of taxes that the U S collects from all sources in a year. So it's 5 trillion and the national debt is more than, you know, more than six or seven times that. So it's all the tax collections times six or seven, and it's just going up and up and up and up and up. And the gap is widening. And then you look at the annual federal spending is 6.1 trillion. So for 2022, we ran a, a deficit of about 1.7 trillion. So we just added uh, out of pure spending. We've got interest accumulating on this debt. Um, at the rate of 711 billion. I mean, that's part of the federal spending and it, that's going to be going up significantly too, because this is all mostly financed at very low interest rates. And during 2022 and 2023, interest rates have gone up significantly. And so that's going to reflect itself in government borrowing. So the whole thing is we got a problem to deal with that we haven't really dealt with. And there's many ways to deal with the federal debt or the national debt. One of them is to reduce spending. And the other one is to increase taxes. And ultimately, at some point, you're going to need to pay. We're all collectively going to need to pay in more taxes to the extent that we don't reduce spending to deal with this. And so I want to show you like... Well, actually, before I get into this, I want to bring Tom on and I want Tom to just talk about why we're doing this video. I mean, I think Hans said it uh, well, is that a lot of uh, retiree savings, and that's who we're mostly dealing with, and maybe a lot of your savings are tied up in accounts, whether it be a 401k or an IRA money that has not been taxed yet. And when you're sitting in that situation, and again, our prediction is that taxes will be higher in the future. You have a problem there, right? Because it's going to be right when you retire that you're pulling money out. You're going to be in higher tax brackets, which means you get to keep less of it to enjoy spending it. And so we want to do some thinking, some planning. We'll get into some strategies in a second of what you can do now to prevent a problem in the future. And so let me bring on the show notes just to get these in here. And you can find these at the link below our video. They're also on our website. Um, I use these daily when I go back and referring to videos we've done. So I would, I would recommend you look at them. Um, but we normally will have the picture of the board. I have a lot of clients that print them out and take notes on it. So they can go back and, and re revisit things. Um, this is a page that I use daily. I have it sitting on my desk, but it just goes through all the tax brackets for 2023. Has some other good information on there. And then really this one is, is, is I think, is interesting, quite confusing. Don't study it on the, the video that you're going to, you know, you won't understand any of it. But if you go to usdebtclock.org, this is just a summary of kind of all the national debt, the different pieces, the different sources. This number is changing, you know, minute every minute. And so by the time this video airs, this number will be different than what we have up on the board. But if you're interested to see what it is yourself, go to U.S. 
debtclock.org and you can you can see it for yourself. Okay. So what well, the next box that we have here on the board is what is the top tax rate now? And it's 37%. In order to be in the 37% bracket, you've got to be a married couple. You've got to be over 694,000 of annual income um, and a single over 579,000. So you've got to be making some substantial money to be paying at this rate. And most people in America are in the 12%, the 22%, 24% bracket, whether they're married or single. You can see you can be much higher firing married, filing jointly. But most people are in this level of taxation. The highest tax bracket right now is 37%. And what we've done to just try to keep things simple and summarize is we've just picked out certain years historically Back in 1945, when we were paying off the debt created by the war, the top rate was 94%, top federal rate. That means that, you know, and uh, some of you remember, but Ronald Reagan was an actor then, and he used to make two films a year. He made $100,000 a film. And so when he'd make his two films, he'd have made his $200,000 and pays his taxes and he'd just go home and he'd wait till next year to make more movies because the third movie would have, he would have had to pay 94% taxes on that rate. And that was just too much for him. Um, if you look in 1981, which is 40 some years ago, the top tax rate was 70%. And that was on a little over $200,000 was the bracket. But point being is that people that made a high income paid 70% taxes on all of their income over a certain amount. In 1986, that had gone down to 50% so that we had some some tax cuts in the early 80s, but it's still 50%. And then the lowest it's been historically was in 1992 was 31%. So a lot of people that have accumulated money in IRAs and 401ks they did it with pre-tax and they avoided these tax high tax rates. But most people accumulated their money in, you know, in these years. And so I just, what went on historically, I guess, doesn't really matter at this point. But we use that information to attempt to predict the future. And I want to go back to the problem. And I want to show you that $33 trillion in debt, uh, an annual deficit, of that pretty soon is going to be two trillion a year, mounting federal debt, um, or you know debt on the uh, on the national. I mean, interest payments on the national debt uh, of seven hundred and eleven billion and growing. Uh, sooner or later, we're going to have to pay for those stuff, and a lot of driving this stuff are social programs like Social Security, Medicare. Those are the big numbers, defense spending. Um, and so sooner or later, it's of our opinion, Tom's in my opinion, that tax rates are going to have to go up significantly. And we're talking about in the future. So if you're in your 60s, early 70s, 50s right now, a lot of our clients that are watching this stuff are in their 60s, early 70s, and they you know, you're looking ahead 10, 15, 20 years when you'll be in your 70s, 80s, 90s. Get ready for a significantly higher tax rate. So I want to bring Tom on to just talk about this opinion of ours. I mean, I think the the idea that they'll be able to cut spending enough to make a dent in this, I don't think is realistic. I think it's probably going to be a mix of both. And again, this is a prediction. I think they're going to have to raise taxes to offset some of this. They might have to cut spending in certain areas. Um, but ultimately, th this is a problem and it's a math problem, right? You have money coming in and money going out and you have money that's not been paid yet. And so you got to bring in more money to be able to pay some of those debts. And so I think that's, a, again, it, it's what we think. We don't have a crystal ball. If we did, this would be a, our job would be really easy, um, but we don't. And so this is, but just it's based off facts. It's based off looking at things. 
and just it's a math problem. It's looking at what's coming in, what's going out, and how do we solve this? So let's talk a little bit about now that we sort of identified the problem, you know, whether you agree with us or not, that's, that's up to you. But assuming you do, what can you do now to fix some of this problem? How, what do we do to help solve this? And so we have sort of on the board down at the very bottom of the, on the right side, it's sort of an orange, some of the strategies that could be used in order to, you know, lower your amounts in your tax, your pre-tax accounts, money that has not been taxed yet, get it, do something. So, I mean, one option that we do a lot of with clients are Roth conversions. Um, don't go do this on your own. It needs to be part of an overall plan. Uh, but that is something we're doing with a lot of clients. Um, if you're retiring, some people historically have not touched their IRA until R&Ds, which is now age 73, maybe 75, depending on when, what year you were born. But what we're oftentimes doing with clients is having them live off that money as opposed to delaying it, because we want to get that money out at the lower tax rates, the lowest tax rates we can. Um, and then another one that can be used is, and again, this needs to be part of an overall plan as well, but life insurance is a way that money can accumulate, that you can access tax-free in the future. So it's another type of account that's available for you to, to accumulate money in a tax-free account that you can access and not worry about taxes in the future. So Hans, why don't you speak to, to those a little bit? Okay. So with these strategies, so this is what we're recommending you do is when you're retired or approaching retirement and you have a significant amount of money in a 401k, an IRA, and you're fortunate enough that you don't have to live off of it, because if you have to live off it, you're already distributing some of it, um, which is many of our clients. So who we're talking to are the people that have the option of just leaving it all in there or leaving most of it in there. And they're just kind of deferring a problem. There's a lot of people that just like looking at that big balance and, you know, they, they, they kind of get deluded in the fact of thinking that's all theirs. And in reality, if you have $500,000 in an IRA and it is all yours, it's in your name, there's no taxes due, but when you start pulling money out of it, you start realizing it's not all yours is part of that belongs to the government because you've never paid taxes on that money, either the money you put in or the growth. So understand that if you're in your sixties and seventies or even eighties, we've had people do Roth conversions in their eighties in excess of their minimum distribution. Um, you're in control of what your taxable income is because you can simply increase your taxable income at the end of the year by making a withdrawal, an early distribution or a distribution that you don't have to. And you think, well, why would I want to do that? Well, if you're somewhere in these brackets right here, to some extent, this is a no brainer. You know, if you're in the 12% or the 22% tax bracket, to simply draw out some of your IRA year by year by year or your 401k and pay the taxes or convert it to a Roth, which is the same thing. You're just moving it from a pre-tax account to a post-tax account or a zero tax account. Um, this is pretty simple is you're voluntarily paying a lot of taxes now to avoid paying a huge amount of taxes down the road. It's kind of that simple. And these three strategies, one of them is just to distribute some and live off it. We do have people with big balances that aren't at minimum distributions yet that live off their social security and their savings just because they don't want to pay any taxes on this. And they actually avoid doing some things they might otherwise enjoy doing. So this first strategy is simple as picking an amount and just paying taxes at whatever low rate is acceptable to you, paying the taxes and then spending the extra money or saving it or using it to build up your post-tax savings. The second distribution or the second situation is a Roth conversion. And this is simply paying taxes on the money and just moving it to a tax-free account. It's still there and it's growing and you're never gonna pay any taxes out of withdrawals on that. And the third option, 
is a lot of people tell us, and I'm saying, what's it for? What's your IRA money for? I mean, you're not withdrawing it. You're not living off of it. What's it for? And when we really push them, they end up saying it's for my kids. It's to, it's to leave to the kids in the end. And, you know, in case we need it, we'll spend it. But if we don't, when we die, it's going to go to the kids. Well, those people might want to look at buying some life insurance with the early distributions that we're suggesting taking just do a little bit every year so that their kids or the ultimate receivers of this money are going to get tax free benefits instead of taxable benefits. So I want to bring Tom back on to, to kind of summarize. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the summary here is that we're in historically low tax rates. We can see that on the, on the board there. Um, We're in a, a, physical situation where the debt is is growing and our idea our thought is that they're going to have to raise taxes to pay off what's what's been promised the debt the the deficit is growing that debt and so with that being the case our assumption is that taxes will go up in the future so what we want to do for our clients is try to get money out at those lowest tax rates possible which probably does mean taking more out of your iras your 401ks um, earlier than you maybe otherwise thought you should to be able to pay those lower taxes. I'm going to speak a little bit to some of the, maybe the younger clients, like, so people in my situation, right? I'm, in, I'm different than a lot of cases of, of our clients here. All of my saving, you might have kids or, or children in this situation. All my saving that I can is going into Roth accounts right now, as opposed to just putting it in the traditional IRA or 401k, I'm putting it in the Roth accounts. I'll have many years of tax deferred growth or tax free growth, excuse me. And when I pull it out, eventually I won't have to worry about tax rates in the future. So um, if you're still working, you might want to consider switching your contributions, which historically you've been making into that traditional 401k. Most 401ks these days offer Roth 401ks. Consider switching your savings to a Roth 401k versus a traditional 401k. Okay. And then a lot of what we've given you today is our opinion or our projection of where we think tax rates are going. But I do want to tell you one thing that's fact is tax rates, these are the rates for 23, 24, and 25. So the rest of this year, next year, and the year after present an opportunity where you're going to possibly see the lowest tax rates ever because in 2026, tax rates are going to go back to what they were in 2017. So when they put in the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, they lowered taxes across the board, but Congress only funded it through 2025. So a lot of what we've given is opinion, but I'm going to give you one fact is that tax rates are going up in 2026. And so this is possibly the biggest opportunity that you are going to see in your lifetime. And I would suggest that you consider taking advantage of it. Now, I want to go over the sections within the scope of all your financial planning. We've talked about IRA 401k today. That's been the main and talking about the balance. We've talked about income taxes, pretty much the whole show. We talked about estate planning because Roth IRA money or life insurance proceeds go to your children tax free, uh, which is uh, a nice thing. And then we talked about income. So. I want to bring Tom back on. I'm Hans Scheil. And I'm Tom Griffith. And we thank you very much for listening. Thank you.